We're at the upstream end of North Fork Reservoir, which is on the Clackamas River, approximately 35 miles from the Willamette. Portland General Electric operates a three dam complex here. This is at the most upstream dam, North Fork. PG is primarily involved in habitat projects like this because they have a vested interest in wanting to see the fish within our project thrive. More juveniles passing downstream through the fish collectors and more adults passing up through the fish ladders is a sign that we're, we're actually improving things. I think PG really, as, as an environmental steward, wants to see that. Fish are quickly becoming endangered. We have stream systems, uh, unfortunately, over time, that have become unhealthy. Uh, we are dealing with issues of climate change. Uh, so whenever we have the opportunity to make a difference, improve habitat, we are doing our best to really conserve fish for the long term. So it isn't just about me, it's not about my ability to go fish or enjoy uh, fish, it's really about the next generation's ability to do the same, uh, to have the same kind of environment hopefully that, that I have, maybe even better, hopefully better, that's what we're really striving to do. My name is Tim Gresseth, I'm the Executive Director of the Oregon Wildlife Foundation. I'm Garth Wyatt, I'm a fish biologist with Portland General Electric. Our fish are ESA listed as threatened, and that's an Endangered Species Act listed as threatened. And really, beyond the measures that Portland General Electric has taken by enhancing our fish passage infrastructure and general fish management, habitat is going to be a limiting factor. So if you can increase what's called carrying capacity through habitat restoration, then you should see an appreciable increase in the total numbers through time and really trying to get these fish recovered. You know, that's the name of the game. PG's number one priority is to see our wild populations become delisted. Uh, we want to see thriving populations of wild salmonids in the Clackamas. This project came about in part because there isn't enough large wood debris in rivers, including the Clackamas River system. For a long period of time, people in perhaps a misguided attempt removed large wood and other woody material from river systems like this because they thought they were making the system more passable for fish. In fact, what we know is that logs are really beneficial to fish habitat for lots of different reasons. This project is designed to slow down the velocity of, of the water to allow adults and juveniles alike a place to get away from that strong current, uh, but also for adults to find places they can spawn and lay eggs. In this particular part of the river, what we noticed is an opportunity to create, in effect, a spawning channel by putting these structures within the, the channel itself. We're very committed to the Clackamas River Basin. We have been for a long time. We've been a partner, actually, with PGE on a number of projects. Uh, we saw this as an opportunity to do something good for fish, um, and the funding was available for us to apply for. So the Clackamas Habitat Mitigation Fund was established as part of our FERC license. So our FERC license is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and that is the entity that gave PG its license to operate on the Clackamas River. When we went through relicensing, the fund was established as another way to provide benefits and mitigation to any project-related impacts on native fish populations. We have certain funding periods throughout the life of the license that partners can come to the table and apply for funding for resource projects that directly benefit the Clackamas River Basin. We were really focused in on uh, providing support to this project because not only was it one that we knew would get done in 2020, but it also just really brought a lot of our partnering agencies together and we just saw that this was going to be a great investment for the benefits that it could provide to the resource in a short amount of time. It's a way to give back to our partnering agencies in the basin as well as give back to the river itself. The Oregon Wildlife Foundation got involved in this project because uh, members of our project committee became aware of a very successful project uh, just downstream uh, that was put together by the Forest Service. Biologists had noticed that it was getting a lot of fish activity. We were very interested in seeing if we could extend the success of that project within the river. So we contracted with an environmental engineering firm to design structures that would emulate the ones that are already pre-existing. I'm Jeff Hales, I'm a geologist with McMain Associates Applied River Sciences. We're a small environmental consulting firm that specializes in river ecosystem health and preservation. The timeline for the project began about two years ago, starting with uh, application funding for the Clackamas Mitigation Fund. That was by the Oregon Wildlife Foundation. 
They in turn hired us to help develop the designs for the project based on the history that we had and the success that we had with the habitat structures just downstream of us. Once the funding was awarded to the Wildlife Foundation, we began developing the designs. Some of the unique features about these designs are an open framework design. In building other habitat structures, sometimes we incorporate smaller woody debris into the jams. What that smaller woody debris does is it gives more of a hiding spot for smaller fish, but these are designed for adult fish primarily. And this gives the fish a place to hide and to move into the jam itself, and it gives it some level of protection. Before these jams were here, the only protection that these fish had were the cover from some of the riparian trees and a few of the logs that were on the bank, but there were very few of them. And so for the number of fish using the site, they really needed some extra space where they could tuck into. And this gave them a spot to do that. So that's gonna give them um, a really good stronghold to be able to use, for more fish to be able to use this reach and be protected. I think what's unique and interesting about this project is the nature of the structures themselves, which are freestanding within the, within the channel itself. When you look at these kinds of habitat structures, typically that are built for fish, they tend to be along a stream bank, they're anchored to a stream bank. In this case, they literally are you know, within the, the channel itself. You have a variety, not just a monoculture of log jams that goes downstream, you have a variety that provides different kind of habitat, creates different flow vectors, you're depositing different types of gravel for different kind of species of salmon as you go downstream. Instead of this flat, overriding monoculture of a river, you get a lot of variety here, and it creates a lot of habitat. We're hoping to really help both Chinook and Late Run Coho. Uh, Late Run Coho are perhaps the last entirely native Coho population in the lower Columbia River. And so we're trying to enhance the quality of spawning habitat in this particular reach for them. Trying to get more eggs in the gravel and increase survival for those subsequent juveniles that are produced from those spawning fish. You know, probably some of the biggest challenges to design this project were our proximity to the highway and some of the overhead power lines. It uh, added an additional layer of complexity to moving the materials in and moving the equipment in. But working with our contractor, they've done a fantastic job. So there was a lot of strategy involved to make this work effectively, safely, with the overall goal of coming in here, building the project, leaving with a footprint that was minimal, that people could come down here and say, wow, this looks really good. Collaboration plays a really critical role in this type of project. Frankly, we are not an organization capable of doing a project like this by ourselves. The only way these things happen is through collaboration. That's why we really value partnerships with companies like PGE and other entities, other nonprofits that make all the difference for us. We were able to utilize uh, folks from several different organizations, in particular the Bureau of Land Management managed the permitting. The Oregon Wildlife Foundation really deserves a lot of kudos. They really bought in early on. McBain and Associates just developed a, a bang up design and uh, aquatic contracting uh, with their skill set and, and how they operate their machines really did a, a great job. One of the, the takeaways, one of the things that I, I really am proud of is that we were able to finish this project ahead of schedule, under budget, in the midst of a pandemic. When COVID hit, it sort of turned the world upside down, but all the partners that were involved in this particular project really stepped up and said, hey, we can pull this off. Let's not pull the reins back and, and punt this project to another year. What I'm probably most proud of is getting it done as quick as we were able to get it done. And we're also able to make something that, that I think looks really great and is gonna be extremely attractive to the fish that we're targeting. had massive fires on the west side of Oregon. The Riverside Fire in particular, I knew was burning towards this project site and I was particularly concerned the effect it was gonna have on the environment and of course the devastating effect it had on people too, but I also expected it would have some impact on the project site. Luckily, it did not have any impact on our project because of the way that the structures were constructed and their location. Unfortunately, the area around was dramatically affected a lot of the older growth did burn up. The fire did creep down to the stream side, and that's really unfortunate. What I think a fish biologist would tell you is that the short-term impact of that might be some impacts on water quality, so poorer water quality in the short term, but the long-term impact can be really good for fish. 
because a lot of those trees uh, that are now potentially falling over are gonna find their way into river systems and then they create that large wood that fish really need. We are spending a lot of energy and effort putting wood in streams and an event like this might do that for us. Events like this, as catastrophic as they can be and as sad as they can be, can actually be in the long term a real benefit to the species we're interested in, in conserving. We know that fish are already using these new structures, but we want to make sure that the investment that PGE and we have made in what we think is, is much better fish habitat actually is. And so we will continue to monitor it, do fish counts, uh, do snorkel surveys to determine that, that the project is working as it was designed to. We're going to be conducting red surveys and mapping where those individual fish are spawning to look at the distribution changes that may result from the project and then sharing the results uh, across all the Clackamas stakeholders and potentially sharing it in a professional manner, publishing the results and trying to get it out there so that folks working in other areas can utilize a strategy like this to try to improve their respective basins and, and move the needle towards recovery. It's great to see a project like this come to fruition and to know already that uh, it's getting used by wildlife, by fish. Oftentimes we, we do these kinds of projects and we sort of hope that they uh, have the result we want, which is that we've improved habitat and that the species that we're trying to benefit actually does benefit. In this case, we already know that. And so that's super exciting. It's great to have a, a positive outcome from this and uh, hopefully we're gonna have a heck of a lot of fish using these structures in the next 50 years or longer, so.